160 years ago today, the legendary reputation of John Bell Hood's Texan Brigade was born. Craig, shouldn't there be a plaque or something? Why are we in the woods? The Battle of Eltham's Landing is important for a number of reasons, but apparently not important enough to warrant a battlefield park. We're at a fantastic local park called the Warani Nature Trail, which is a great example of the tangled woods in these lowland swamps. This was a confusing action fought in the woods that helped to propel John Bell Hood and his Texans to fame. It's also the battle where Hood's career almost came to a premature end. He almost was killed here. The question is, will he be killed here in our war game today? Stick around and join us for the Battle of Eltham's Landing. Will Hood survive? Can the Texans drive the Federals back into the river? And how will our players in the game respond to some unexpected fog of war twists? All that and more coming now. Josh, before we get to today's war game, I think we should explain a little bit of the context behind the battle. And to do that, we are at a location about five minutes from the little town of Barnumsville. Yeah, and the actual town of Barnumsville isn't much of a town. Ordinarily, this little crossroads would have held no importance. However, on the day of May 7th, for Johnston, something major was developing. If you've been watching our On to Richmond video series, you know that two days ago, George McClellan was late showing up to the Battle of Williamsburg. In part, that is because instead of commanding his army, McClellan was busy doing what he loved most, organizing logistics. On May 5th, he supervised the boarding of William B. Franklin's division of 11,000 troops near Yorktown, and he intended to move them by ship up the York River to land behind the rebel lines and cut them off from Richmond. The ability to use naval movement and make this kind of end run had long been one of the reasons McClellan wanted to campaign on the peninsula in the first place. He chose Eltham's Landing in part because it was directly across from West Point, the terminus of the Richmond and York River Railroad. McClellan saw this railroad as an attractive asset for transporting his massive siege train of heavy guns to the very gates of Richmond. And so on May 6th, Franklin's troops at Eltham's Landing formed a bridgehead. Yes, now in theory, that bridgehead should have been very dangerous for the Confederate right flank. Only in theory, because in truth, General Joseph E. Johnston had been worried about this kind of naval end around for weeks. The landing did not catch him by surprise at all. In fact, if anything, Josh, Franklin was worried that he was the one who was about to be attacked. So instead of acting offensively to try and cut off the rebel retreat from Williamsburg, he's worried about being isolated and trapped against the bank of the river. And guess what? He should be worried. On the morning of May 7th, Johnston orders General Gustavius W. Smith to protect the Confederate retreat by launching a small probing attack against Franklin. Famously, Johnston's order is to feel the enemy gently, whatever that means. Three Confederate brigades are assigned for this gentle feeling. It will be about 10,000 men, though most of them will either get lost in the woods or never engage. Josh, as we leave the Warani Nature Trail, let's take one more look at this dense, heavily wooded area. This is very rugged terrain that is not well mapped by either side, and that's going to be a factor in today's game. Back at the club, we've set up a six by four tabletop to represent the battlefield. It's heavily wooded, and this tangled forest hides a nasty surprise for today's players. To them, the tabletop looks like this. But what we haven't told our players is that locals dam the creeks and streams around Eltham's Landing, creating man-made mill ponds. Greg and I know these impassable water features exist, but we haven't placed them on the table yet. On the Union side, we have Dieter and Ed, while our rebels today are Miles and Chris. Eltham's Landing is a confused meeting engagement, so the forces for both sides begin off-board. These are 15 millimeter figures, grouped into regiments for the rules Regimental Fire and Fury, published in 2010. You can see we're assigning each regiment a poker chip, plus a few decoys. To start the battle, both sides maneuver their poker chips onto the board to represent hidden formations. When units come within six inches of each other, we'll reveal them. I'm Chris Presley, and I'm playing John Bell Hood. I'm Miles, and I'm playing Wade Hampton. I think the plan for today is to advance cautiously. We don't really understand the ground, and I'm pretty sure our GMs will have some very nasty surprises for us. 
So I'd rather see the surprises inflicted upon the union. Hopefully they'll advance aggressively and we'll see what happens. Yeah. Miles knows this club too well. He's right to be suspicious of scenario surprises. In fact, all four of our players seem to be a bit skittish in early turns. Their opening moves are tentative, probing, and aside from a little long-range artillery fire on the flank, neither side wants to risk bumping into an unknown enemy. Historically, and rather famously, John Bell Hood ordered his Texans to stealthily advance with empty muskets to avoid any accidental shot that might alert the Yankees to their presence. Hood's trick worked almost a little too well when the general was nearly killed by a startled and surprised federal picket. And here we are 160 years later with our Texans creeping forward silently through the woods as well. Eventually, the Texans find the Federal Vanguard near a large pond neither side knows about yet. The sudden appearance of this water feature comes as a shock to the players. <laughs> <laughs> How did you know, this Chris? Side of the yeah. <laughs> was that randomized? Or no. Was that, that was no, no this is historical. Mm -hmm. There is actually a body of water there. And they, didn't, they really didn't know that they were there. Our first body of water isn't the only fog of war surprise. As poker chips are revealed and regiments placed on the table, formations must roll on this scenario table to see if they are lost or delayed. It represents the massive confusion and chaos at Eltham's Landing in the Tangled Forests, where entire regiments were historically lost. First. I'm rolling this one first. Okay. Two. That's not good. That's not good. <laughs> good. Deploy 12 D6. 12 plus D6 to the rear. Fifteen. Fifteen to the rear because you are delayed. Some of Hood's regiments are now on the table, but not exactly in position where Chris expected them. And on the Federal side, a giant body of water has now unexpectedly split the Federal position. And remember, this is just the first pond to be discovered so far. Three more remain to be revealed. Oh, we thought we had that flank refused, but there's a lake there now. I like the lake better than my own troops. Well, yeah, the lake is more solid defense, but we got uh, two units isolated on the other side. I don't know how we're going to deal with that exactly, because they go right up to the table edge. They, If they're getting around, they got to go around the front edge of the lake. Right. But who's to say there's not going to be another? Who knows? Another pond. You don't say. Sure enough, on turn five, Hood's advance reveals a second large body of water. The Federals thought they had a solid battle line, only to discover it's badly disjointed by the mill ponds. But Chris, playing the role of Hood today, is having trouble pouncing on this golden opportunity. Five. Uh, we haven't had five. Uh, yeah, what's yeah, a five? Five's a, five. a good one. A five is confusion. Left or right? Left or right, six inches. One, one to three is left. All right, put them in the drink. One to three is left. Is that, is that so much left? Is right there. So right. six inches to the left. How far six is six? Inches? Take oh. it. Yeah, there's okay. a single oh, mic okay. on the other side oh, of the right. yeah. oh. side of the finger. It's actually on the other side of the finger. There. Okay. Halfway into the action, most of the federal regiments are on the table revealed. But Miles has kept Wade Hampton's brigade hiding in the woods. As a result, Chris must go it alone against the federals around the ponds. The Texans drive forward into a hail of gunfire. The Texans find themselves enfiladed by fire from across the pond and are driven back. But Chris won't be deterred. He brings up two more regiments from the brigade. In the furious firefight, Hood is hit, but it's only a light wound, not serious enough to take him out of the battle. To relieve the pressure against Ed, Dieter advances his brigade. Dieter's attack now threatens to hit Hood's line in the flank. The threat is enough to finally lure Miles out of the woods. This immediately triggers the reveal of another large pond, and its discovery presents the rebels with a problem. Miles has most of Wade Hampton's brigade on the eastern bank, and the Yankee advance is blocking his path to relieve Hood. Dieter and Ed see the opportunity and spring into action, coordinating an advance against Hood's brigade. Thousands of bluebellies appear through the woods, but Chris must really be in a role-playing mood tonight. Rather than pull back, he channels his inner John Bell Hood and orders his men to charge. Three. 
Mm, uh, I have to look at that one. Five for training might be okay. Uh, you're fresh, right? Yeah. You're yeah, fresh, fresh and you have a gallant leader. Yeah. So, so you're going to be at least three. plus three. Yeah. yeah. Units in Fire and Fury must roll on a maneuver table to see how far they're able to move each turn. There are modifiers for training, leadership, and a host of other factors. And on turn 11, Chris rolls well enough to meet the Yankees head on with cold steel. The Texans drive back two of Ed's regiments, but fail to rout them from the field. This is just a 12 turn scenario, fairly short by Fire and Fury standards, because the historical battle was a very short affair as well. William Franklin's division holds two of the three crossroads, signaling a minor Union victory. Neither side has come close to exiting a regiment off the opposing table edge, so much like the historical battle, our war game today is not strategically decisive. Yeah, uh, well, this is, as Josh said, this is basically the historical battle. Uh, the only other, like, surprise that we didn't really incorporate into this, but that was a surprise, is that this edge right here, this whole edge, basically all the way up to the road, uh, turned out to be a cliff. Because uh, the Confederates tried to swing troops out to come through this open field to cut off the Union. Because mm -hmm. a lot of the fighting was happening out here, so they were going to swing out here. But the guys came up to the edge here and realized that it's so, just a sheer drop into a ravine. So there was so much not a whole lot here that not even the Confederates knew the ground. No. Right. No, they, they did not. Did the guys behind them stop? It was off the knee. <laughs> <room. laughs> There's no reason to go over this way. We hope you enjoyed watching this neat little engagement, which did run a bit longer than our usual quick strike video reports. Because this is part of an ongoing Peninsula Campaign series, we better add a historical postscript to the real battle of Eltham's Landing, which only lasted a couple hours. Both Franklin and Hood came away from this action feeling that they had accomplished their respective missions. Franklin's report to McClellan said, I congratulate myself that we have maintained our position. Well, never mind the fact that maintaining his position was not really Franklin's mission here. On the Confederate side, three brigades had been earmarked for the action, but only Hood truly committed his men to battle. Johnston was duly impressed and asked Hood what would have happened if he'd ordered the Texans to attack rather than gently probe the Yankees. And without missing a beat, Hood replied, I suppose, General, they would have driven them into the river and tried to swim out and capture the gunboats. The legend of John Bell Hood and the Texan Brigade was born. If you'd like to build your own legend at Eltham's Landing, just a reminder that all of our scenarios are available for free on our website, littlewarstv.com. Head over to the free stuff section and grab yourself this exact scenario and more than two dozen others. Thanks again to all of our Patreon supporters who made the Peninsula Campaign road trip possible. And it's not over yet. Next week, there are two more videos in this series coming your way, one here on our channel and one exclusively at Richmond National Battlefield Park. Be sure to subscribe and follow both of us to never miss a real-time update on the road to Richmond. It's all leading up to an epic war game fought between our club and a team of park rangers. Stay tuned.